When discussing SpaceX's major competitors in the space industry, we often think of Blue Origin, or ULA. However, in recent years, a new force has been slowly but surely growing, with the potential to join the space race alongside the industry giants. They've even managed to embarrass one of SpaceX's longtime rivals, Blue Origin, and that is Rocket Lab. So, what has this private company done with its rockets to astonish these major competitors, especially when it comes to their upcoming rocket Neutron? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. When comparing Blue Origin and Rocket Lab, it might seem at first glance that Rocket Lab is the newcomer. However, when we look at what each company has actually accomplished with their rockets, Blue Origin appears to be lagging behind. The company has faced ongoing issues with delayed launch schedules and technical challenges related to its engines. While New Glenn, Blue Origin's first orbital rocket, successfully reached space earlier this year, it took 13 years to get there, far from the company's original promise that it would launch by 2021. On the other hand, Rocket Lab, despite operating on a tight budget and without a billionaire like Jeff Bezos backing them, has made impressive strides. In just seven years, the company has launched its small electron rocket over 60 times. And when compared to Blue Origin's new Glenn, Rocket Lab's upcoming medium lift rocket, Neutron, is especially noteworthy. It's set for its debut launch by the end of this year, after only four to five years of development. This launch will mark Rocket Lab's entry into the highly competitive market of major commercial space players, where the competition is fiercer than ever. In preparation for that milestone flight in late 2025, Rocket Lab has recently carried out rigorous testing on Neutron. Milestone reached on the road to Neutron's first launch. Stage 2 qualification is now complete, proving out the stage's design, operations, and readiness for flight, the company announced on X, alongside striking and beautifully lit photos of Neutron's second stage basking in the sunlight. The structure withstood over 590 metric tons of force and tensile loads to demonstrate its resilience under extreme stress. It also underwent simulated flight operations in cryogenic conditions, with tests on integrated software, avionics, and guidance systems to replicate real mission scenarios. In addition, the stage passed pressurization and proof tests at 125% of its maximum operating pressure while under mechanical stress proving its readiness for the orbital journey. Rocket Lab also highlighted the unique design of Neutron's second stage, something many enthusiasts are excited about. Unlike traditional rockets where the second stage sits atop the first and is supported from below, Neutron's second stage is suspended from the top, hanging inside the first stage's tank. This innovative configuration takes advantage of a lightweight carbon composite structure, reducing overall weight and improving efficiency. During the flight, once the first stage's cap opens in space, the second stage is released and ignites its Archimedes engine to carry the payload into orbit, a streamlined approach that simplifies stage separation. As Peter Beck might say, it's a one-shot deal, like a cosmic getaway car. Of course, with this kind of operation, Neutron's second stage is unlikely to be fully reusable. At best, the company might recover some parts of the fairing, However, using an expendable second stage helps Rocket Lab avoid the ongoing costs and complexities of constantly refurbishing reusable upper stages. But it's not just the second stage that stands out. Neutron's first stage is impressive in its own right. One of its most notable technical features is its static landing legs. This is a high-end engineering choice. Static legs don't need to deploy or retract, which is a big advantage. They're simpler to design and build and they eliminate a major point of failure. If your landing gear fails to extend or lock, your rocket isn't landing. The real benefit, though, comes in reusability, which is the entire reason landing legs exist in the first place. Static legs don't need to retract before launch, and their simplicity means they require minimal inspection or refurbishment between missions. Skipping all those extra steps saves both time and money on future launches. Another standout design feature of Neutron is its Hungry Hippo fairing. This innovative design makes the fairing part of the first stage structure stay attached throughout the flight. Instead of separating and falling into the ocean like traditional fairing halves, Neutron's Hungry Hippo opens to release the second stage and payload, then closes back up to return to Earth along with the first stage. 
the fully intact first stage, with the fairing still attached, then lands back on the launch pad, ready to integrate with a new second stage for the next mission. This advanced concept could significantly accelerate launch cadence, eliminate the need for costly and unreliable ocean fairing recovery, and allow the second stage to be lighter and more streamlined. Thanks to the Hungry Hippo design, the second stage is completely enclosed within the first stage and fairing structure throughout the launch. The excitement doesn't stop there. Neutron will be powered by an entirely new rocket engine, Archimedes. Designed and built in-house by Rocket Lab, Archimedes was initially planned as a reusable gas generator cycle engine using liquid methane and liquid oxygen. It was expected to produce one meganewton of thrust and offer a vacuum ISP of 320 seconds. At first, only seven of these engines were to be used in the first stage. However, things have changed quite a bit since then. According to updated specifications, the vacuum ISP has increased to 367 seconds, and the sea level ISP is now 329 seconds. ISP, specific impulse, is a key measure of a rocket engine's efficiency. Rocket Lab later announced a shift from a gas generator cycle to an oxidizer-rich closed cycle after operational evaluations revealed excessive turbine temperatures, tight margins, and the need for too many compromises. Ultimately, instead of using just seven engines in the first stage, they'll now use nine. Thanks to Neutron's lightweight carbon composite structure, Archimedes doesn't need the high complexity or extreme performance often seen in larger launch vehicles. By building a simpler engine with modest performance requirements, Rocket Lab believes it can significantly accelerate development and testing timelines. Back in January, the company successfully conducted ignition tests of Archimedes on development hardware. We can expect full-flow hot-fire tests soon to verify injector performance and overall engine capabilities. Another major development alongside Archimedes involves the materials used in Neutron. It will be the first large launch vehicle in the world built entirely out of carbon composite. Rocket Lab has already pioneered the use of carbon composites with its Electron rocket, which has been reliably delivering small government and commercial satellites to space since 2018. Neutron structure will use a newly formulated carbon composite, lightweight, strong, and capable of withstanding the extreme forces and temperatures of repeated launch and re-entry. This durability allows for frequent reusability of the first stage. To support rapid manufacturing, Rocket Lab is employing an automated fiber placement system that can produce several meters of carbon rocket shell within minutes. Honestly, this bold design and comprehensive development effort highlight Rocket Lab's ambition to make Neutron a dependable launch vehicle, especially after being recently selected for the U.S. Space Force's National Security Space Launch Program. With its first flight expected in late 2025 from Wallops Island, Virginia, Neutron's lightweight construction and powerful performance could give it a major edge in the competitive medium-lift launch market. Alongside the cargo version of Neutron, there's also growing interest in a potential crewed variant and maybe even a dedicated crewed spacecraft developed by Rocket Lab in the future. While the company has stated they're not currently building a crewed vehicle, they've repeatedly emphasized that Neutron is being designed with human spaceflight in mind. It's exciting to look forward to Neutron's debut later this year, right? If Rocket Lab pulls this off, it could really become a miniature version of SpaceX. And I'm pretty confident about that. Beyond the Neutron testing itself, Rocket Lab has also been preparing a landing platform to support the rocket's first launch. Beyond the rigorous testing required to perfect Neutron-related technologies, the company has been laying the groundwork for a groundbreaking milestone, achieving a vertical landing during the rocket's inaugural launch. This audacious goal underscores Rocket Lab's confidence in its engineering prowess and its vision to redefine reusable rocket technology. The decision to aim for a vertical landing right from the first Neutron launch is a bold leap forward. Unlike traditional rocket designs that prioritize expendable systems, Rocket Lab is betting on reusability to lower costs and increase launch frequency, a strategy that could revolutionize access to space. The company's experience with its smaller Electron rocket, which has already undergone multiple recovery experiments, provides a strong foundation for this endeavor. Those earlier tests, including mid-air helicopter captures and ocean splashdowns, have honed Rocket Lab's expertise in precision recovery techniques, 
giving them a head start in tackling the challenges of landing a larger, more complex rocket like Neutron. To make this vision a reality, Rocket Lab recognized early on that a specialized landing platform was essential. In February, the company unveiled plans to repurpose an offshore barge into a state-of-the-art landing platform tailored specifically for Neutron's recovery missions. This floating runway will allow Rocket Lab to retrieve the rocket's first stage after it descends from orbit, paving the way for refurbishment and reuse. The barge's mobility offers unparalleled flexibility, enabling landings in optimal oceanic zones regardless of the launch trajectory. Peter Beck, Rocket Lab's founder and CEO, emphasized the transformative potential of this new infrastructure. Our innovative landing platform will dramatically expand access to space by unlocking a wider range of mission profiles that demand Neutron's full performance capabilities. By enabling rocket reusability, we're not just reducing costs, we're creating opportunities for more frequent and ambitious missions that were previously out of reach. But Rocket Lab's ambitions don't stop at reusable rockets. The company is also making waves in the satellite market with the introduction of Flatolite, a groundbreaking new satellite product designed to meet the growing demand for affordable, scalable, and rapidly deployable spacecraft. Unlike traditional satellites with bulky, complex designs, Flatolite boasts a sleek, flattened architecture that allows for efficient stacking during launch. This innovative design maximizes the number of satellites that can be deployed in a single mission, optimizing payload capacity and reducing costs for customers building large constellations. Flatolite is our answer to an industry crying out for versatile, cost-effective satellites that can be produced at scale and delivered on tight timelines. Beck said in a statement. By combining high-volume manufacturing with seamless integration into Neutron's launch system, we're empowering our customers to build constellations faster and more affordably than ever before. The Flatolite platform is highly customizable, allowing Rocket Lab to tailor each unit to the specific needs of its clients, whether for communications, earth observation, or scientific research. Its modular design also streamlines production, enabling the company to churn out satellites in large quantities without sacrificing quality. This capability positions Rocket Lab to capture a significant share of the burgeoning satellite constellation market, where companies like SpaceX, OneWeb, and Amazon's project Kuiper are already vying for dominance. Beck described Flatolite as a pivotal step toward realizing Rocket Lab's long-term vision of becoming a fully integrated space company. This is more than just a new product. It's a bold, strategic move to complete the final piece of our end-to-end -end ecosystem, he explained. By operating our own rockets, building our own satellites, and eventually delivering services from space, we're creating a seamless pipeline that connects Earth to orbit and beyond. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.